did well and go on her way. But Jesus stopped and he brought recognition to her, which I don't believe she wanted. And then this shy woman, probably shy because of how outcast she was socially, now becomes a public speaker. <laughs> she's preaching to the whole congregation there. Well, how do you know that, brother? It says she's talking to all the people. She's giving her testimony of what Jesus did. She's giving it public praise. You say, Brother Tim, why is that so important? Let me ask you this. Have you been giving Jesus public praise for the last time he delivered you? Oh, no, Brother Tim. I mean, I just wanted to get better. I just want my situation to get better. And he got no praise to all the people? Oh, she made sure, hey, he's getting praise. I've been dealing with this 12 years. He's getting praise. See, we don't give him enough. See, if any of y'all have been familiar with going to any college graduations, you know there's a high Latin involvement in academia. And that Latin influence shows up many times in the graduation ceremony. And you'll hear when people graduate, the person making the announcement will, will mention that this particular person is graduating cum laude in the Latin with honor. And then you'll hear another graduate walk across the stage and you'll hear the person say, this person's graduating, magna cum laude, meaning with great honor. And then the few, the very few, you'll hear walk across the stage, and that person will announce, this person is graduating summa cum laude, highest honor that we bestow on anybody. God is looking for summa cum laude praise. Not the, with honor, not with some honor, but the highest honor goes to Him. We need to be giving Him summa cum laude praise for what He does. Have you done that the last time He delivered you from anything? Oh, yes or no? It's all about Him. We're going to die soon. I don't know if you know this. People around you are dying. This life's short. Blink of an eye, we're through it. What's it going to matter? Summa cum laude. God, the highest praise for what He does. He doesn't get enough praise. What have we done for what He's already done? At least I have a track record. Lord, you know if you'll deliver from this. You know what I did the last time. I was always praising you. Everybody knew what you did. And you got glory. You got summa cum laude praise for me. So anything you do for me, Lord, you'll get the highest praise. And then the fifth point is the long-term problem led to an added blessing. See, added? I mean, the ladies had 12 years of bleeding every day. Social outcast, broke. Emotionally drained, physically drained, anemic. And now she's healed. She's back to 100%. Yeah, but there's, there's even better news. Because he says to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Jesus never used this word daughter for any adult in the Bible except for this lady. Daughter. Word of so much grace and compassion for her. And he tells her, your faith has made you well. This word well is sozo. It's translated even sometime in the Bible, saved. I believe Jesus was affirming that part of this was her salvation because I believe she was putting her faith in Christ not only for healing, but for her own salvation. I believe when she fell down at His feet, she was also placing her faith in Christ as the Messiah, as her Savior and her Lord. Because you can get healed and not be saved. 
But I believe this lady had placed her faith in Christ. Remember this? Remember one of the lepers? Remember ten lepers come to Jesus? He heals all of them. Sends them on their way. And as they're going their way to the priest, guess you remember what happens to one of them? He turns back around. He says, wait a minute. I haven't given summa cum laude praise to the one who just saved me. So I'm going turning back around. As I heard Brother Tim's sermon. No. Yeah. I got to get praise. I've, I've, I've got healed and I haven't done phase two. So he turns back around and thanks Jesus. Remember, he, he was the Samaritan. He, he, he comes back and he, gets pray, he gives thanks to the Lord and Jesus says to him, your faith has made you well. Well, he's already well. Isn't he? He's already been healed. That's the word sozo, which is also the word Jesus used for this woman, sozo. Your faith has saved you. That one leper, leper was also saved because he put his faith in Christ. That's why Jesus said that. We could go on and on. I only picked two of these examples. I could have given you more. Remember the woman who washed Jesus' feet? Remember she dried, dried him with her hair? Jesus said to her, your faith has sozo in the Greek, you. Well, she wasn't even sick. And even here in the scripture, it's translated saved. This woman not only got a physical healing that day, I believe she got a spiritual healing by the Lord Jesus Christ. And that bad incident of suffering for 12 years led her to not only physical healing, guess what? It led her to the Lord. Oh, you know what? Had she never been healed, she still was going to die. And guess what? Even being healed, she still died one day, didn't she? Yeah. So what would the healing done much good had she not been spiritually healed? Because she was still going to die. But this miracle led her to praise and led her to put her faith in Christ. And guess what? She did it publicly. The praise public, and I believe her faith in Christ was placed publicly. Oh, she got a great blessing. You know, and as I'd mentioned before, these two stories, I believe, go together for several reasons. First of all, they're, they're, they're part of all the same story. Remember, Jer Jairus, his daughter was sick. He comes to Jesus, would you please heal my daughter? They're on their way there. This event happens. We find out the daughter dies. Jesus basically raises her and, and heals her. And all this is one story. And guess what the similarities are? The scripture mentions that the girl is 12 years old. Why does it mention that? And it mentioned this lady, just didn't say a long time, it says 12 years. For the exact number of time this daughter was alive, was the exact number of years this woman had suffered. Why do they go together? Because they teach another story. Who was the highest person socially during Jesus' time? Jairus, head of the synagogue. Respected, admired, socially at the top. Who was the person at the very bottom? This woman, unclean ridiculed socially at the very bottom. And Jesus brings the two stories together to say no matter what you need and where you fit into this entire realm, I'm willing to meet your need by grace. God wouldn't do that for me. I'm too high up. God wouldn't do that for me. I'm too down low. No. God can do it for everybody. And if we say God wouldn't do it for me. You just made God a liar because he just showed you in that story. It's from everybody from the top to the bottom. I'll show my grace to you. And he did. And this woman was blessed. See, it all goes, comes back to one thing in our walk. It's our gratitude. Gratitude. I don't know if anybody ever saw the movie. It was made in 1959. It was called The Hanging Tree. In 1960, it won an Academy Award 
It was nominated for an Academy Award. It didn't win. It was nominated the next year. It starred the famous actor Gary Cooper. Most of the kids in here don't know who that is, but I mean, that's a... You know, but he was the famous. He was the, the famous actor of the time. And he played a doctor in this Western. And this young man who had attempted to steal some gold was shot while he was attempting to grab it, and he ran away, and lo and behold, the doctor, Gary Cooper, finds him, takes him back to his house, takes the bullet out, does surgery back in the Western days, I mean, whatever they did back then, pulls out the bullet, it was like during the gold rush days, pulled the bullet out, sewed him, got him sewed back up, nursed him back to health, and he lived. There in the movie, him and Gary Cooper are there and they're kind of working out how this guy's going to be able to pay him back. He's the doctor. He has no money. Obviously, he got in trouble because he was stealing. That's the reason he got shot. So he doesn't have any money to pay him back. So there they are talking about how he would repay him and Gary Cooper, the doctor, says, well, I've always wanted an assistant. He said, I'll tell you what. You be my assistant. And of course, the young man's like, well, you know, his question is, well, for how long do I need to be your assistant? And Gary Cooper makes this great line. He says, forever, because that's how long you'd have been dead if I wouldn't have saved you. <laughs> oh, that's classic. That's good. That's good. You're going to be my assistant forever, because that's how long you'd have been dead if I wouldn't have saved you. Listen, if God wouldn't have saved us, We'd have been dead in our sins forever. If he wouldn't have saved, got you your family delivered, your illness delivered, found you that employment when you couldn't found any, healed you, ministered to you, saved your marriage, got you that promotion. You know what? We owe him what we owe him for life. Because we'd be dead for life. We'd be unemployed for life. We wouldn't have anything had he not given it to us. My brother Tim, I got, I got college is why I got my job. You couldn't think a thought in your brain had God not given it to you. Amen? Well, I work long, hard hours. Only because God gave you health for long, hard hours. We have nothing that we can claim in this life that God didn't give us. And the gratitude will show up in our worship, in our attendance, in our love, in our sacrifice, in our service, because we say, not like to Gary Cooper, but to God, I owe you for the rest of my life, because that's how long I'd be dead or divorced or whatever. I wouldn't have anything. I owe you, Lord, and I'm going to praise you, Lord. And it's going to be summa cum laude praise, and it's going to be a little bitty magna cum laude praise. I'm going to show you that way with my life. It made a difference to her. It turned her life around. She was never the same. I don't know if it's true or not. I read and heard and about possibly this lady going back to her hometown and, and erecting a statue of where Jesus and her was the healing. She maybe came into some money and did that. I don't know if that's true or not. They had, a couple of places I read said it may have happened. It wouldn't surprise me. This lady wanted it to be known because her life was different. She even had life. How much? We don't even know how much longer she would have lived losing that kind of blood every day. You know, that's us. We'd have been dead had our heavenly surgeon not rescued us. How much do we owe him? And to turn our back and say, Lord, that was no big deal. I'll just live my life the way I want to. That guy could have told Gary Cooper, I'm running out the door right now, I don't owe you a thing. But what Gary Cooper did to that man was nothing compared to what my God did for me and what your God did for you. And we owe him so much. But in order to get our answer, we first have to humble ourselves, get focused, Know that when he does answer, and even before he does, there's some things you can praise him for, like this woman did publicly, so that you know that everything God does for you, you know you deserve, he deserves your, he deserves praise. 
and then remember that when he does it, we owe him for it for the rest of our life. That'll change your life right there. If you live by those principles, maybe your answer may come quicker. Maybe the answer that you're believing, maybe your delivery will come quicker when we prepare ourselves that way because it's all about God. This whole situation came about, I believe, for the glory of God. What about your situation? What about my situation? Has it lived to praise God? Am I humbling myself? Am I getting focused or have I lost focus? Or have I got prideful? God stands here today ready to restore us. But it all starts with us humbling ourselves, not even worried. Can you imagine what this lady may have got from some of her friends? What are you doing crawling on the ground in that dirt? That's embarrassing. Getting stepped on with your hands trying to touch somebody's deal. That's about the most stupid thing. Look how silly you look down there on that floor trying to touch somebody's garment. Probably crawling on your knees. Get up and be a respectable person. That lady didn't care what anybody thought. She said, I'm going to get healed. Y'all go do what y'all want to do. I'm going to get healed. That's what a lot of people do. They never do anything for Christ because they're saying, what's everybody going to think? Look, I've been desperate enough. I don't care what anybody thinks sometimes. Maybe that's why God has you in that desperate situation. Say, forget what people think. Pride's not going to be the issue. I want what I want because God's going to get the glory. She didn't care. She said, I am focused, and when I touch it, I know it'll be hell. That's faith. She had faith. She said, I know that he's the Messiah, and when I touch his garment, that's all it's going to take. There wasn't anything magical in the garment. She just put her faith in that right there. It was really in him, because that's how his power in that particular incident came to bring her healing. Where are you this morning? Are you ready, whatever the deliverance is? Are you preparing yourself in this way for whatever God has for you and whatever God wants to do in you? We have to prepare, I believe, for what lies ahead so that whatever it is, it can be ours. And it won't bypass us. We've got a short life. We can't miss anything that God has for us. Any blessing of healing, deliverance, maybe some sin, whatever it is that we're believing God for, we need to prepare for it even today. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you stand to your feet, as our music team comes, if you would, right just where you are, maybe bow your head and close your eyes. You say, well, Brother Tim, why, does, why do we give invitations a time where we make these decisions in our life? Do you see that's what Jesus did? Right in the middle of this story, he stops. He turns around. And he has this woman have to make her decision publicly. He didn't pull her off to the side. He didn't say, come over, let's talk privately about this and tell me what happened. No, he had her say what she did publicly. And she pronounced it publicly. What her what Jesus had done for her. And so we do the same thing. We believe God has set an example for us that right where you are and whatever you're dealing with, say, Brother Tim, how does the Lord know what I'm dealing with? God knows everything. And so whatever you're dealing with today, God knows. Humble yourself and give it to Him. Some of you in the sound of my voice have been going more than maybe 12 years and looking for the answers and you haven't found it in Jesus because you've never given Christ your life. You've never received Him as your Lord and your Savior. You may have been religious. You may have gone to church. You may have done religious things. You may have prayed prayers. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about giving your life to Christ and making Him your Lord and Savior. Don't waste another day of your life because you still have life. And today, there'll be men up here at the front that would show you how to come to know Christ as your Savior where you will have heaven secured for you 
where when you die, you know you'll be going to heaven because Christ is your Lord. Like this lady also received Jesus as Savior. Some of you are dealing with some hard situations, some difficult situations, maybe 12 years plus, I don't know. Maybe you just want prayer or somebody to pray with you. Or maybe you just want to come to the altar and pray between you and the Lord. And say, Brother Tim, I've already given it to him several times. I give it to him again. Just humble yourself before him and you don't know what day the answer will come in its own time. But you know it will always come when you humble yourself. You have to do that first. Maybe some out there want to be healed and maybe you want one of the men here to anoint you and pray for you. We'll do that as well. Maybe some in the sound of my voice has said, you know, Brother Tim, what the Lord's leading me is to join fellowship here. I've been praying about it. I've been thinking about it. And I believe God's given me a peace that I need to be serving the Lord here and giving Him my highest praise here. Maybe some have other issues. You know what they are. God's Holy Spirit touches us and reveals that to us. Maybe you just want to come over and pray or whatever it is you respond.